What day is it, Krista? It's the 5th. It's Wednesday. Remember, remember the 5th of September? No, next, that's too much. <laughs> Get in there. So, people are always upset about Tesla stories. And they say... It's exciting. We get engagement. It's so exciting. You're biased. You shouldn't be talking bad about Tesla because they're God's people and they're doing God's work and you're evil. Well, good news. We have two Tesla stories this week. Actually, there's one in nonsense. You should really join Patreon to complain about that. And uh, both of these... (laughs) Give us money, Sue. Both of these are positive, though. First one is a follow-up about Tesla's Canadian woes. Well, you've been vindicated, everyone who bitches about everything. Tesla has won their case against the Ontario government. It does look like, this article says, it does look like the Ontario government has set up Tesla for failure. Tesla got their day in court. Those drivers are going to get their rebates. Puppies are released into the streets and doves. (laughs) Into into traffic. (laughs) I have to go. Ruth needs me. So if you don't remember the story, it was ruled that you couldn't get the $14,000 rebate. Which is a lot. Unless... You bought from a dealership, direct from manufacturer, didn't count. Well, guess who that affects? And only affects is Tesla. And the court agreed, and so they're going to get their $14,000. Good news for them. Now, this next story, I don't know how I feel about it. Because on one hand... I see, I think this was enough to make you into a Tesla believer. <laughs> no, but see, here's, here's the thing about it. You know, because we have this argument, like we were talking about the AI. Is it better... Like on social media, for example, there's this, we want to stamp out racism, right? Is it better to stamp out people being able to make racist comments so that there's now just hidden racism? Or is it better to get the racism out there so that we know about it? And we know to avoid those people. We can react to it as a people. Which one is better? If you just simply fix the symptom and not the disease, is that the way to go? And it looks like Tesla is going to answer that question for us. Tesla has filed a patent for automatic turn signals. So they're talking about using their their driver system. It says that it looks for cars around you in order to determine whether or not uh, it needs to turn the turn signal on, which means that the self-driving system is like, oh, there's a car that you're about to move in front of. Let me turn on that turn signal for you. It's like a passive aggressive, you know, mother-in-law or something. I wish there was a voice line that tagged as soon as you like it had to do it for you. Oh, let me do that. <laughs> well, they did mention that some higher end cars now, if you if it detects lane switches and you haven't been signaling, there's a little alarm that goes off, like the seatbelt alarm. It's like, <laughs> hey asshole, you should be signaling. Well, we're living in the future. But people still ignore it, like the, the telemetry that they get back. People just will not use those. I test drove a car the other day for random reasons and. The it had a driver alertness system, and if you act like you're all messed out, it was like, "Good job, alert driver," because you're like, "Oh," and it's like you're alert, but if you're just driving normally, yeah, it's like, "Oh, you're only fifty percent alert." So you should just take meth the whole time in these <laughs> smart cars. What score did it give you when you were checking your Twitter every time you stopped at a red light? <laughs> I try not to do that. Try, yeah, but sometimes that. fails. <laughs> Well, we've been talking about net neutrality, and that, that's that's a never-ending parade of headlines. I've stopped including those stories because it's the same thing every week after week. Yeah. It's, it, nothing really happens, but they're always getting this like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Really, this time it's going to happen. But it turns out the, uh, the big telecom companies are using a nasty tactic to fight against it. <laughs> the uh, Motherboard article, the headline is, Big Telecom is using robocalls to fight a net neutrality bill in California. And in this robocall, they're telling citizens that if their California people vote on this net neutrality bill, their bill is going to go up by $30. Their which, wireless bill. Yeah, uh, which, which doesn't, and like data is going to cost more and blah, blah, blah. And, and the, we'll take your firstborn, et cetera. Yeah, we don't even, like, uh, your bill's going to go up regardless. Like, whether or not, if net neutrality doesn't pass, your bill's going to go up. If it does pass, your bill's going to go up because it's a captive audience. They can charge more. Why wouldn't they? Well, this next story is hidden from our oh. view. We we have Adblock Plus on here instead of UBlock or Pico Block or whatever how you pronounce it, and so it doesn't have the Adblock detector detector. And unfortunately, <laughs> that have bit us in the butt right now. Thorot dot com. Thorot. That sounds like a like fancier thought. way of thought. Yeah. That, that's a guy's last name. A royal thought. A so uh, yeah, they they they've got a snarky little script running on here, but you don't need to hear about it. The headline pretty much tells you it all. It's Xbox All Access. How exciting. How, all access to what? Well, I was I thought it was kind of dumb. because So it's like, how much is Xbox Live? Do you know? 
Too Amerika much. Or console people, yeah. I think it's like five or six bucks. Right? Oh, maybe no. ten. Maybe I think it was more. I would think it'd be more. So this is thirty-five dollars a month for the the new. What's the new hot? The more powerful Xbox. Xbox One S. And then there's the Xbox mm-hmm. One X, right? Uh, yeah, I don't That's know. not confusing at all for moms so, looking to buy something well, for their kids. The more powerful one is thirty-five dollars a month, and the the cheaper one is twenty-two dollars a month. So you think well, that doesn't sound very great, right? But here's the thing about it. You get the console for that price. Hmm. So you have a two-year contract. You sign up for two years. They send you the console. And at the end of the two years, you keep it. Neat. So for the more expensive one, you're, you're paying like 800 bucks for a console. And it's a library of games like Steam that you can play on demand. Eh. I mean, I guess that's neat. I don't know. Maybe the audience can tell us. Well, Xbox games are like 60 bucks. If you buy them new. I don't think that it's... It doesn't seem like it's really cash effective when there are other alternatives out there that last longer. I don't think you're going to get AAA games. I think you're going to Well, get... they talk about that. So I think like the Microsoft exclusives you yeah. might get. So some of them you'll get. You get Minecraft. Ooh. And that's really Ooh. all you need. Right? You definitely... Minecraft. Minecraft and current year. I would love to pay monthly for Minecraft. That sounds amazing. Let's see. $22 a month. Times twenty four months. That's like over five hundred dollars. Well, the the better one's thirty five. So it's like <laughs> it's like eight fifty for the good console. That, that sounds like a terrible deal. But you get to keep it. And what is that? Four or five hundred dollars? It's like renting furniture. So it's two. If you, if it's if Xbox Live is ten dollars a month, then that's two forty right off. Oh, the bat. you get the free Xbox. Yeah, but I mean, in PC world, that was free to begin with. Well, I mean, what were apples and oranges here? Come on. <laughs> well, so. Microsoft can be, I guess, somewhat applauded for taking their library of old games and giving it to you for free. Uh, well, uh, not for free. Not really for free. Monetizing it in a realistic way. You know who won't do that? Nintendo. Nintendo. <laughs> I'm super, Nintendo has only recently got clued into the fact that a lot of people were shaped by their intellectual property. And they are going after everything tooth and nail. And so this is like fan-made Pokemon games and now, this is not even games. This is like the assets used to create fan-made games in that universe. And Nintendo is like, no. Well, right. I mean, if this is using assets that Nintendo created and stuff, I could see maybe there'd be a bit of an argument there, but it is kind of like douchey. They are. Well, you've got some argument there. They're using them, but they're not but, selling them. Yeah. That's so if, the they're, thing. if they're not selling them, it's kind of like, oh, so does that really matter? It's the sound effects and sprites and stuff like that from all the old Pokemon games. And it's an RPG Maker plug-in. So you can literally just make your own Pokemon games. There's probably some dark, dark Pokemon games out there. Yeah. <laughs> you think some of them might have a sexual theme? <laughs> I can see that, unfortunately. More than a few of them, probably. <laughs> Woo! Oh, how low can you go when it comes to the Pokemon universe? Well, now we know how low Global Foundries is willing to go, <laughs> and it's not seven nanometers. <laughs> Oh, there's the Global Foundry story. So we switched to hardware. And this is probably, like, I mean, I could talk about this for like a half an hour. We have not switched to hardware. This is business hardware. Business. This is business news. And there's no think. specific hardware here. Yeah. Actually, this all, is the lack of hardware. I, so Global Foundries, they originally were AMD's fabrication thing. And they do 12 and 14 nanometer process. Most people don't realize that they actually license one of those processes from Samsung. So Global Foundries didn't really come up with that. AMD has has their seven nanometer process at another foundry, which is TSMC Taiwan and uh, Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing. Global Foundries just sort of they weren't the first with seven nanometers, and so they've basically said, "Hey, because we're not the first with seven nanometers, and it's a race to the bottom with this, and it's going to cost us a whole bunch of money for us to invent our own seven nanometer process." We're just going to sit back and make a whole bunch of money on our 12 and 14 nanometer process because there is not enough chip production facilities like fabrication below 22 nanometers on planet Earth. So why would we spend billions of dollars developing a new process when we can just spool up the process that we have and sell more and more wafers on that and make a boatload of money? They've talked about how it's it's nearly a billion dollars to come up with a start to finish process for these things. And they didn't really have anyone lined up that they thought they were going to make their money back. They've they've shifted from R&D to, hey, let's try to turn a profit. Yeah. And so they're making 
Not even, uh, you know, CPU chips as much as they're doing like embedded systems. Yeah, specializing in process. Sensors and stuff like that. Yeah, so. they said that that is probably going to be their money maker. It, it also talked about how some of their investors, or one of their investors apparently has invested up $10 billion over the last little bit. But Global Foundries has been losing a little bit of money every year. And so if they were to invest, I think it was over $2 billion to get 7 nanometer to where that it would be profitable. But... Again, then when we do the seven nanometer process, it's going to be the three and five nanometer process. So, Global Foundries thinks that they can make a lot of profit with the processes they have, while everybody else is chasing that seven nanometer rainbow. Not in Russia. <laughs> well, last week we talked about Never Linux and Linux gaming under Steam. They introduced their new tools, and they had uh, what was it like two thousand games? And we wondered how long will it take for many new games to get added to this and the answer is about a thousand a week so far <laughs> this is community like a community driven effort so since steam has rolled out proton a tool that lets you play windows games on linux uh, the community has tested a zillion windows games and a thousand windows games are apparently marked perfectly playable under linux your they mileage have, may vary well they have uh, i think it's five levels of status and it's like Per, no no lost frames, perfect emulation, playable, expect bugs, runs on some people's systems, and you know, doesn't so work at all. It does not work. Yeah, they did mention that yeah. uh, almost I think sixty percent of the testers are running Nvidia. Yeah, and Nvidia apparently has way better support than AMD. It it varies. It definitely does vary. I was helping somebody on the forum this weekend. And they ran into all kinds of crazy stuff with the, the NVIDIA card, uh, with Overwatch, strangely enough. And I didn't really have many of those problems on an AMD card, so I don't know. But that's, you can't play that through Steam. Well, that was just, it's using the same tools. So, it's like. Well, we've talked about the telecommunication companies, and they're just disgusting, horrible people. And you wonder, could they really believe any of the crap that they talk? Is there any reality where they they really do buy into the things no. that they say? Well, we might have a little proof against that this week. <laughs> this Tech Dirt article is amazing because, one, the person at Tech Dirt knows enough about this to uh, sort of know what's going on. They're like, let me break it down for you. And they go through the talking point thing, and they just completely eviscerate the telecom industry. It is amazing. Someone got a text. I got a text message. <laughs> Not me that. this week. So, yeah, the, the he, this is a great article because he does literally break down point by point this whole, because they accidentally sent him their talking points, the uh, upcoming, uh, like a Senate hearing or something like that. But the big, I, the only one really worth mentioning, and you should read it, but the one, the, the headline one, is that they're doing everything they can to transfer blame onto. Google and Facebook and the big tech companies and Netflix. And so they're saying it's like, look, we're not the bad guy. Look what they're doing over here. <laughs> and all those people watching all these Netflix movies, it is completely upended our business model. We have no idea how we're going to turn the old model business where we were selling you 25 cents per email into, you know how many emails you have to send? It's like the equivalent of a Netflix movie. It's a lot. And, you know, that's just not fair to us. We got to make money. Someone's got to tell them, like my mom told me, I don't care what the other kids are doing. I care about you. <laughs> and I hated that as a kid. I hated it. Everyone else did bad, Mom. I did good. How would you feel if your mom was always, like, praising the other kids' accomplishments? <laughs> <laughs> Taking them out to dinner? Well, Timmy did this. Well, see, you know, I tried to get that, like, you know, you get a paper or something. It's like everyone else got to be. Or everyone else got a C, but I got a B. And she's like, no, you should have gotten an A. <laughs> I was like, oh. Okay. Unre unrealistic standards. Uh, yeah. uh, well, it happen often, but. It's that time of year again. We get the, the <laughs> annual churn of unnecessary upgrades. And if you run out and buy, buy the brand new iPhone, some might accuse you of using it as a symbol of excess. <laughs> the ghost of St. Jobs has descended from Mount Olympus, and this year's phone is a uh, gilded. Get it? Excess. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> the iPhone XS. <laughs> it's bigger. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a nicer display. Despite the fact it's called XS, which is also an abbreviation for extra small. 
<laughs> you can get it in gold, which is even further excess. It should have been called the iPhone AU. But yeah, <laughs> I don't. Uh, it's hard to get excited about iPhones. Uh, but you know, if you if you like them, here's this one. You can read about it. <laughs> here's this one. Take it, I guess. Yeah. So here's some interesting news. Uh, I guess maybe a bit of of ground gained back for the user, and this time from Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft has removed device install limits for Office 365 users. Uh, this is kind of this is not really a lot different than what they were doing before. You can only be signed in on five devices at once, but it used to be that when you would remove a device, you'd have to like reinstall, and now you can just log out and log back in. They do talk about you can share, uh, presumably across IP addresses. So okay. if you got some aging parents who are going to you know run Word once a week, or you know maybe keep a spreadsheet of their a spreadsheet of their. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was that uh, uh, Freudian? Sleep. Freudian, yeah. yeah. Uh, keep it in there. Keep a <laughs> keep a spreadsheet of their uh, bank transactions, you know, for thirty minutes on Sunday. <laughs> There's no reason to buy them a license, right? So it, that's good news for that. It also talked about how uh, I think there were some wording changes in the license to permit like a guest at your house to use it or whatever, because people were freaking out about that. Somebody mm. somewhere. It's like, oh, you can you got a guest computer that's like a sixth thing. I guess that's fine. It's still software as a service, yeah. which is a plague upon us, but uh, it seems to be the world we're living in. And we're also living in a world where you just can't keep your cryptocurrency safe. <laughs> what can you do? Well, John McAfee would tell you that he has the answer, but some other people would disagree. <laughs> he said, well, they've been saying I've got this unhackable cryptocurrency wallet because you don't store the salt. Like it uses a passphrase for a salt or something, and that's not supposed to be stored on the device. This research approved, oh, it is, is actually stored on the device. Yeah. Well, the, so the challenge was he was going to give a certain amount of money. 250000 250000 If you could beat his BitFi wallet. This was a new company that he's got. And the guy did. But then they said, oh, no, no, you have to beat it without modifying it. And so the guy continued to iterate. The guy that beat it the first time beat it a second time without modifying it or something. But McAfee came back and said, you beat it when you get my coins. So he wants his coins to actually be stolen, which is probably like a <laughs> felony, right? If you invite gotcha. that, is it okay? Mm. Buys so, me a contract somewhere, like a bug bounty. But yeah, this guy figured out a way to uh, to get it to run some kind of... Uh, it, it didn't even take specialized hardware. Mm -mm. He was able to do it in software and get escalated privileges and get into it. It didn't break the key. He just got around it. So BitFi, they've taken back the bounty. They're not granting it. <laughs> but they're just ending that program, and they're like, okay, we'll take a look at it and see what you found here. In other words, Oops. we're not paying you. <laughs> <laughs> Un, you can't say stuff like unsinkable ship or unhackable wallet. Like, it's, just, it's not going to happen. Now, I, I wonder where you – I just noticed this is October 30, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> where did you find this story? This came back up recently. I don't. I didn't notice that it was from – You were digging for Star Trek from, dirt, weren't you? From 2017. Well, I, so after reading this – I kind of felt like it was written by a six-year-old. <laughs> did you get that? Yeah. Yeah, I totally did. All the Is news was, we didn't have any news, and I was super depressed <laughs> after reading the news, and it was like, I need I something, need something nice. that's going to like feel better. Well, it is interesting that it wouldn't quite, he talks mostly about the shields. Yeah. You know, so it wouldn't be like the Star Trek shields. No. But it's, it's cool the way they describe it. I, th I think that the, the, the exciting thing here is that uh, for Interstellar, it, the, I, oh, I know why I put this in here. It was, we had... Um, the space station. Yeah, the space station. The space station this week got a micrometeorite hole, and there wasn't really a lot of stories on that. And one of the one of the people on the space station put his finger over the hole temporarily. As one does. As one does. You know. To, you know, but it was micrometeorite. And so this story talks about how with quantum entanglement and quantum materials and things like that, we may actually be able to build superconducting materials that we can wrap a space station in, which would give it a kind of magnetosphere or whatever and protect against space travel and all these sort of metamaterials that were in Star Trek may actually be possible when we've got better control over quantum mechanics and quantum materials and whatever. I imagine that would be a power-hungry endeavor, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a superconductor, maybe not, because, you know, space is naturally insanely cold, so superconducting materials work fine in the vacuum of space. It it may not it may not end up being much more power than I mean we're already strapping nuclear reactors on like probes and stuff. 
what if I had some sort of beam weapon that developed your entire ship and suddenly increased the temperature exponentially? <laughs> the superconductor would stop <laughs> and everyone would die. <laughs> Vaporize you. <laughs> might be easy to overcome that. <laughs> but it is fun to think about possibly having... You know, not having holes in the ISS, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's really I mean, scary. It was, a, news. it was a tiny, tiny hole. <laughs> well, it turns out tiny holes they in need space. That, they need that, that that tape stuff, like where the guy slaps <laughs> it on the water so... tank. But they need that little, you know, the the spray foam that expands rapidly. <laughs> yeah, just, we'll just, just spray blast that. some of that. In there. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> I don't know how that stuff works in zero gravity. Well, this it's next like story a is a thought topic. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think he was saying T H O T. Thought topic. Oh, I thought you said something else. What do you think I said? It's a swear word. I can't say. Well, we we do that sometimes here. Spell it like like I'm a five year old. F U C K. That's what I thought. That's what I thought you said. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I, no, it's the way you said it. You can be verified on Instagram. That's the story. And like, why is that even a story? It shouldn't be really. I mean, Twitter allows verification. Swimsuit models need check marks. I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna see what's you know. People like Stacy back here. You know, she, <laughs> she's an influencer, brand influencer for level one. We're gonna see if we can get her verified. <laughs> <laughs> the level one thought, if you will. Uh, well, we've talked about uh, more and more. We hear about Google, and there are stirrings inside of Google. The employees rise up with their digital torches and pitchforks. They're angry about China. They're angry about the drone program. And it turns out some other Silicon Valley companies are not immune. <laughs> Dozens of Facebook have united to challenge its intolerant liberal culture. I, this article made me think about the uh, the scene in Monty Python where the lady gives birth and like she was in terrible pain just a moment before in the scene, and then you know she's given birth and she's she's relieved. She's like, "Oh, doctor, doctor, is it is it a boy or a girl?" And the doctor turns around and is like, "It's a little early to be imposing gender roles on it, don't you think?" They were ahead of their time. <laughs> so somebody penned a memo. I'm, I re, I think back to the uh, remember the Google guy that got fired for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name, but someone else has done this at Facebook, and basically they're saying, you know, I'm afraid to express my political opinions because I will just get immediately attacked and probably fired if I do so. And that's intolerance, just like the, you know, the national socialists are intolerant. <laughs> and he's not wrong though. Part of me wonders though, how often are people discussing politics at the office? Well, according to these guys, if you put up a, a poster or something that just encouraged diversity and political ideas they would be removed wow. it was just like no we feel a certain way here at facebook and everybody will feel that way hmm. they didn't come out and say it necessarily in official company policy but you would be moved to the basement if they found out you were a trump voter maybe wow so what a terrible corporate culture that seems to be pretty common in the tech industry unfortunately oh yeah well that's kind of what they're saying you know it's like a Facebook should be better than this. So, I don't know. They they have, it is such a popular opinion. I wonder if this will get any traction. But I got a news story, at least, I guess. <laughs> this news story is related to that, because what if your opinion about things also prevented what college you could go to? Remember uh, the, the Chinese social score prevented yeah. that kid yeah. from going to college? And you think, well... It wouldn't happen here, not in good old U.S. of A., right? Well, this college has rejected an applicant for following Alex Jones on Twitter, their lawyer says. Their lawyer says so. Well, they won't reveal who this person is or what the college was, although they say it's a like very prestigious, well-known college. So, so my, maybe Ivy League. My take, like, so for me, the headline and the actual contents of the story seemed like they were a little in conflict because... One of the lawyers in there that passed a bill, there's a bill in like 2012 that prevents them from asking you these kinds of questions to begin with in, in like the college application scenario or whatever. And so it seems like it happened again recently and there was a story about it or is the story, the story is probably not about a story that happened in 2012, but things like that were happening a long time ago, which is why the law was passed in the first place. But apparently it's still actually happening. No, see, I think you're, you're missing the, the whole timeline here. You're not allowed to ask. That's what happened in 2012. Okay. They didn't ask. Oh. It was just easy to find. Oh, okay. So then they went and looked at it and it found was like, well, that counts. This person 
And they switched the the pronouns. They see they use he article, and she yeah. in the article. Okay. So I don't know which one it was, but uh, this admissions employee found them on Twitter, saw that they follow Alex Jones. Now they had never like retweeted Alex Jones or engaged with him on any level, but just following him, they rejected. <laughs> this lawyer was able to prove that and track down the admission person's Ooh. Twitter, and they had really done a lot of Bernie Sanders, <laughs> uh, you know, like interaction and stuff like that. So he was able to take that to the college and they immediately reversed the decision. Yeah, the uh, the college made it go away. So as to... So I wonder... Would you want to go to that college after knowing that kind uh, of... Yeah, I mean... Well, you get the idea that it might be like an Ivy League. That's so, kind of the vibe I got. But yeah, you, you want to go there just because of where it is. Yeah. You need that debt. To be at that level. <laughs> well, if you're going you're gonna to go in debt either way, you might as well get a really valuable degree out of it. I'm going to be really upset when thought police means something in the, different in the future than it does right now. See, I thought was thinking police. THOT, yeah. yeah. Thought police. <laughs> Intrusive thoughts. Because yeah. thought police meant a thing in this context of this college thing, but it's going to soon mean something else, and that makes me upset. It's going to be a popular DVD series that's sold on late night television. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, Twitter, speaking of Twitter, maybe Twitter should warn you that following Alex Jones will get you rejected from colleges and other social situations. And maybe they're going to start doing that. <laughs> so I thought about this and I thought about like, you know, the Apple Watch with like the fitness stuff. How long until those apps start colluding against you? It's like I'm browsing Twitter and browsing Twitter and my little smartwatch is like, oh, your blood pressure is going up. Oh, your heart rate's increasing. <laughs> it's like, let me figure out what you're looking at on screen and tell you not to follow that, which is what this, this is just telling people not to follow things. I, they claim. I don't, I don't know how it determines that. Well, they right? claim it's, they want to declutter your feed. So if there are people who are not contributing to the discussion, like, I don't know what the hell that means. But I get the idea that these are accounts that they can't prove are bots, but are posting things that they don't like. Mm. So this is sort of a way to, we're not going to ban you. We're not going to shadow ban you. We're just going to nudge people away from you. I kind of wonder if this is also like Twitter's way of like, the administration there is just so overburdened with like trolls and people reporting each other. That they're like, let's just suggest people unfollow each other. Right. And then yeah. that gives us less people to have to look through, like less reports. Well, yeah, I think it's exactly that. They they're, they can't block these accounts. They don't have the evidence, but they strongly have suspicions about them for something. I, I wish know. it was a little more transparent. Well, of course, we've learned that Apple is... Uh, it's gay friendly, but you know, not in Russia. It's they're fair weather gay friends. That's what they are. <laughs> and when they're in Russia, they're just like, yeah, screw the gays. We hate them. <laughs> well, it turns out Facebook also you would expect to be gay friendly. You know, they're on the forefront of that new new wave of tolerance and everything. But when it comes to ad dollars, they're willing to sell you out. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that uh, Zuckerberg will go on record and say, well, you know, we didn't realize that advertisers would misuse. Our categorization systems, like, yeah, we have a category for people that are into that stuff. We just didn't think that anybody would want to buy that kind of ad for that category. Oops, yeah. our bad. We're working real hard to improve things for the future. Except so, then they won't. So much like the, uh, remember the, the housing yeah, advertising thing? So it turned out if you were black or Latino, you wouldn't get advertised the, the nicer houses in the neighborhoods where... They didn't want your kind. Oh, that was just algorithmic. That wasn't a human being doing that. That <laughs> yeah. was just a, that's what they said. So this tag, Still terrible. the tag here. Oh, you remember the the Russian one where you were tagged as being interested in uh, yeah, revolution? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this tag was you were interested in gender issues, <laughs> and if it figured out you were interested in gender issues, you got gay cure advertisements to fix to pray the gay away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wonder because Facebook is on the forefront of, you know, trying to get rid of Trump, too. So if they successfully get rid of Trump somehow, do you think they'll allow advertising from the Mike Pence school of <laughs> gender, gender reeducation? Because <laughs> that'll be a thing. I really hope that they have an archive. I mean, in like 50 or 100 years, if historians have an archive of the congressional interview with Zuckerberg, it's going to be amazing. I mean, the scholars that look at those where the people in Congress were asking questions of Zuckerberg, those people weren't even literate. 
They couldn't read. I was going to say it was the first example of a robot responding to questions in real time, but <laughs> that too. It was they groundbreaking should, in a lot of ways. They should get Zuckerberg for that uh, robot hotel in Japan. <laughs> the Zuckerberg bot. They would have to dress as a, <laughs> as a dinosaur. <laughs> they, they would replace the dinosaurs with him, and then a week later they'd have to put him back. It's like nobody's buying it. Nobody's, was, nobody likes that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Futurama have a Zuckerbot? I don't remember. There's some, there's there is so something many. sort of unnerving about it. The way he yeah, speaks he's on Kenny Valley. Himself. Yeah, yeah. there's a uh, there was something about like I, if Futurama had been like ten years later, it probably would have been wildly successful because all of this is fodder for amazing, amazing jokes. And but that the remember the South Park guys at one point they announced they're like we're kind of getting out of politics because it's so easy. What there is no joke here. The joke is it's already the joke. <laughs> so what can we do to further lampoon? This dog and pony show that is <laughs> so American absurd. Pony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We'll, well see you Friday. Friday will be uh, security and nonsense. And uh, again, short week, <laughs> not a lot of news. Security like and nonsense like a, go together. I think everybody went on Labor Day vacation early. It's yeah. lightning. It's lightning round. It is lightning round. Lightning round of news. <laughs>